today we're going to include vegetables, which should usually be 50% of your plate. You can choose greens of all types, salads, and remember raw vegetables always produce the best results in your body because the vitamins have not been tampered with. And then next is your protein. Your protein content should comprise at least 30% of your plate. Your meat, your proteins, whatever meat you decide to use, whether it's fish, chicken, or even beef or mutton, but mutton is fatty, so use less of it. Remember, vegetables and proteins provide you with a lot of vitamins, minerals, and protein, of course, is a bodybuilder. Part of your vegetables should also include lentils. This adds a lot of nutrition. It gives a punch to your food. It gives that good taste. If you don't have meat, you can always substitute with beans or other lentils, which are rich in protein, and they will give you that balanced requirement for your nutrition. And then now we come to the carbs, which should actually be only 20%. It's good to choose your carbs. You can either have chapati, brown chapati, or your rice. And of course, 20%, we're talking of very little. It just uh, gives a small portion of, of your carbohydrate and this will ensure that you remain healthy and you, your health will be okay, you have your healthy eating plan. So this is an example of a good, well-balanced plate and then of course add things like fruits, water and other additions. This has been Self-Care Tips on Healthy Eating. Songstress Nikita Kering took home two awards, Best Female Artist East Africa and Best Artist Duo or Group in African R&B and Soul. X. Award-winning Kenyan boy band Sauti Soul were crowned as the best group. Sauti Soul featuring Ben Soul, Inveri, the storyteller. Shana Manjeru emerged as the youngest winner of the 2021 All Africa Music Awards at 13 years old. Shana! Let me tell you something. Eh? Polycap is doing the most. He understood the assignment. The song is beautiful. Make sure you check all these things out. Tuesday on Good Morning Kenya. Um, if you look at regulated sanitation coverage, yeah. and I say regulated because when you go to the rural areas, there's a lot of what is unregulated. People have sanitation if you mm. go to your village. Can you sit back and say that, yes, we are going for the next election, and you can give yourself a pat on the back and say, you have delivered. We have done well. The next question, a Kenyan out there yeah. in Pokot will ask, mm -hmm. I don't have access to clean water. How, how can you be clapping? My name is Muhammad Ahmed Muhammad, the CEO of Kenya Deposit Insurance Corporation, popularly known as KDIC. The corporation recently increased the protected sum from the previous 100,000 shillings to 500,000 shillings per account. This is the highest in Sub-Saharan Africa. In effect, the corporation now covers 99% of the depositors in the unlikely event of a closure of a bank. So KDIC encourages the depositors to continue doing business with our banks that are strong and resilient. Be sure, check out for a KDIC sticker in your banking hall. KDIC. Protecting your deposits.
from Lokichogyo to Vanga, Namanga to Mandera in Kenya and around the world. This is KBC Prime Edition. Good evening. My name is Tomboya Purity Moseo is away. Carol Jenga will come in a little later on with the day's business and Richard Munga will be driving the sports agenda. Our top stories tonight. Your acts, coupled with the immense sacrifice of our health workers, forestalled what could have been a national catastrophe. Service to the nation. Security forces receive accolades for role in COVID-19 containment measures. Tomorrow, after our NERC meeting, there will be determination mm. in when it comes to quarantine, mm. which countries, um, who, where, when. Uh, but it looks like it may be possible that we will have to put in place quarantine measures. Taming Omicron, government considering reintroduction of quarantine for visitors. Not yet off the hook, court upholds DCI boss's four-month jail term. Thank you very, very much for joining us this Monday, the 29th day of November 2021. Anne Wangechi is in charge of our sign language docket. Remember our social media platforms at KBC Channel 1, our Prime, our hashtag Prime Edition, and my Twitter handle at Tomboya24. Let's go straight to our top story. President Uhuru Kenyatta has commended Kenyan security agencies for playing a leading role in containment measures against the spread of COVID-19. The president says heroic acts by police officers backed by sacrifices made by Kenya's gallant health workers have helped forestall a national catastrophe. The head of state was speaking when he presided over the pass out of over 2,000 administration police officers at the AP training school that's in Embakasi in Nairobi, Kenya. JJ Kuria opens our coverage tonight with that report. At the Administration Police Training College in Embakasi, Two thousand six hundred and ten police officers were graduating after rigorous training as Kenya seeks to boost her police to civilian ratio. <laughs> President Uhuru Kenyatta presiding over the event that had members of the public locked out owing to the COVID-19 protocols. <laughs> Each taking their oath of duty, swearing to protect the lives and property of the millions of Kenyan public. President Kenyatta used the opportunity to underscore the huge role played by the police in stemming the spread of COVID-19 in the country. Your acts, coupled with the immense sacrifice of our health workers, forestalled what could have been a national catastrophe. That mission of enforcing public health measures was not part of the regular operations of the NPS. President Kenyatta charged that the seamless manner in which the service adapted to the new demands imposed by COVID-19 is a reminder of the fluid nature of a contemporary law enforcement environment and urged the new officers to continuously improve their competencies. You are the face of the organization. Whether in uniform or in civilian attire, whether on duty or off duty, your individual and collective actions will reflect on the National Police Service. While reiterating the government's commitment to continue supporting reforms in the service and the welfare of the servicemen and women, the head of state cautioned the new officers against engaging in corruption. My plea to you today is not to allow the fruits of your many years of sacrifice wither because of graft. Save yourselves and your families the agony the shame and the tears that come from, from prosecution, suspension, and being exited from the service. While well, the United Nations recommends a police to citizen ratio of 1 to 450, Kenya stands at a ratio of 1 to 1,150, one of the best in sub Saharan Africa. John Jacob Curia, Prime Edition. 
Meanwhile, President Uhuru Kenyatta will address a joint sitting of Parliament Tuesday in what could be his last State of the Nation address as President. The Head of State has in the past used the State of the Nation address to highlight development progress as well as measures being taken by government to secure the country from external aggression. The President will be addressing the joint sitting in accordance to Article 132 of the Constitution. Honorable speakers, that requires him to address Parliament on all the measures taken and the progress achieved in the realization of national values and submit a report for debate to the National Assembly on the progress made in fulfilling the international obligations of the Republic. The address, which is the eighth under President Kenyatta, is however significant as it could be his last as the country goes to the polls in August next year. The President is largely expected to dwell on his achievements since assuming power in 2013. The maritime border dispute between Somalia and Kenya will most likely feature in the speech, with President Kenyatta insisting that Kenya would not cede an inch to its neighbor. Kenya's place in the community of nations and its strategic place in the restoration of peace in the territories of our neighbors may also feature in President Kenyatta's speech. John Jacob Curia, Prime Edition. Now, the government is considering reintroducing compulsory quarantine measures for those entering the country to curb the spread of the newly discovered COVID-19 strain, Omicron. Health Chief Administrative Secretary Dr. Massimo Ngangi says Kenya has heightened surveillance at all points of entry. The World Health Organization says that it is working to establish whether the new variant is associated with more transmission, severe illness, as well as vaccine evasion. The National Emergency Response Committee on COVID-19 will meet on Tuesday to deliberate on how best to protect the country from Omicron, the new COVID-19 strain which was recently discovered in South Africa. Among the issues said to be discussed include the reintroduction of quarantine centers for those coming into the country. Tomorrow after our NERC meeting, there will be determination mm. in when it comes to quarantine, mm. which countries, um, who, where, when, mm. uh, but it looks like it may be possible that we will have to put in place quarantine mm. measures. Mm. Protective quarantine space mm. as we test them and then release them to the community. So mm. we still have those and once the guidelines and travel advisory come out tomorrow, we will be able to, t uh, to announce and uh, publicize which uh, uh, facilities will be uh, quarantine centers. The government says it remains on high alert even as countries around the world continue to announce far-reaching measures to contain the spread of the new strain. We've heightened our surveillance activities, um, particularly at the ports of entry. Uh, coming into Kenya, of course, there will be need for you to uh, present a COVID-19 ne uh, COVID negative certificate. The World Health Organization says it doesn't know yet whether the Omicron variant is associated with more transmission, severe illness, risk of reinfection, and risk of evading vaccine. <laughs> Meanwhile, the Ministry of Health, in collaboration with pharmaceutical Novo Nordisk, have launched a competence-based training curriculum for diabetes. The curriculum is set to harmonize the provision of diabetes education and training in Kenya for better care and treatment of the over 2.5 million people living with the disease. It essentially helps us to pick diabetic cases earlier. It helps us to get children who may be diabetic and who may be misdiagnosed as well as adults and then to ensure that they get the proper care that they so very much need. Mm -hmm. And additionally, beyond providing a curriculum for healthcare workers, we've also then put together a curriculum for peer educators. Uh, it's all about making sure that the patient is in focus, uh, listening to the patients. It's all about making sure that all actors are brought to the table, including both private sector, government. Nancy Okwari, Prime Edition. Now, um, let's look at the COVID situation in the country. Kenya has so far vaccinated over 6.95 million people against COVID-19. According to the Ministry of Health, 4.29 million have been partially immunized, while over 2.66 million have received both doses over the last 24 hours. 28 people have tested positive for the virus from 2,969 samples screen, indicating a positivity rate of 0.9%. The fatalities are now at 5,334 after one late death, 
was reported from the facility. Record audit in November. Global statistics from the John Hopkins University indicate that over 261.6 million people have been infected, while over 5.2 million have died, sadly. Now, on to that Jimmy Wanjiki story and the firearms and licensing board has accused businessman Jimmy Wanjiki of litigating and enforcing court orders against the wrong parties. This follows petitions filed by Wanjigi leading to the sentencing of the Director of Criminal Investigations. The board father said that Wanjigi should have dealt with the board directly for any assistance and not the National Police Service. The board has directed Wanjigi to appear before it for mandatory vetting. This follows a directive by Cabinet Secretary Interior to all licensed civilian firearms certificate holders to undergo vetting and subsequent renewal of their firearm certificates. Let's slide now into the corridors of justice. The High Court has declined to set aside a sentence against the Director of Criminal Investigation, George Kinoti. On November the 18th, Kinoti was sentenced, you remember, to four months in prison for contempt of court on grounds of failing to surrender firearms that belong to business Jimmy Wanjigi, as we reported. Meanwhile, the court will on Tuesday make a ruling on whether the ejected FKF President Nick Mwendwa will be charged. On the 18th of November, the court sentenced the Director of Criminal Investigations, George Kinoti, to four months in prison for contempt of court. This prompted the DCI to file a notice of motion seeking to have the court set aside the sentence, saying he had been wrongfully enjoined. Kinoti had maintained that the firearms were in custody of the Firearms Licensing Board. In a ruling delivered virtually by Justice Anthony Murima, the court declined to set aside the sentence saying the DCI did not prove how the firearms were transferred to the board hence the sentence remains in force. Meanwhile, ejected FKF President Nick Moindra, who was arrested on Friday, will remain in police custody until Tuesday when the court will rule on whether he'll be charged. Moindra had early run been set free after Miss Lina's application seeking to detain him for 14 days was closed. Shortly thereafter, he was arrested again. Appearing before Chief Magistrate Eunice Nutu, Moindra through his lawyers Eric Mutua and Mutula Kilonzo Jr. objected to plead taking as they called on the court to review the sports act in violation of article 10 of the constitution the state acted in bad faith a charge cannot be preferred against Nick Mondo based on the regulations and the sports act because if the DPP and the executive can be allowed to flout those regulations, it means that those regulations and those and the provisions of the Sports Act 52, 53 and 54 uh, have no legal value. The ruling on whether he'll be charged will be delivered on Tuesday. Serafina Roby for Prime Edition. From the court straight into politics, Deputy President William Samoy Ruto says tribal parties have no place in Kenya's politics. Speaking at his current residence where he engaged members of the Wamama Nahasla, Ruto termed politics based on tribal formations as the biggest impediment of Kenya's development as they propagate hate, division, as well as ethnicity. Deputy President William Ruto hosted women political mobilizers under the Wamama na Hasla banner at his current residence. <laughs> where conversation on tribal parties took center stage. Mutaunganisha Kenya na mnagani. Kama hamuwezi hata kukubaliana kwa chama. Kila mutu wamekuja na chama ya kona yake. Na chama ya kikundi yake. The deputy president challenged his competitors to rally behind a formidable candidate who will face him in the 2022 general election. He said more than 10 candidates were leading tribal outfits which they have failed to transform into national outfits. He inchi yetu ya Kenya kuna watu wametuzoea. Wameteka nyara inchi yetu. Wakateka nyara uongozi wa nchi yetu. 
wakateka nyara uchumi wa nchi yetu wao ndio wakawa wenyewe sisi tukawa maskota kwa hii nchi yetu mimi nataka niwaambie safari hii sisi tutakomboa hii nchi iwe ni nchi ya kila mkenya kila mkenya MPs allege the deputy president hit out at Ruto's competitors saying they have no solid agenda for the country. The conversation today going to the next elections is about our economy and how we will move our economy to the next level to lift the people at the bottom of the pyramid up. Tangu 2012 ukitembea na mtu miaka 5 na hujaona ni mbaya unamchukua tena safari ya mbili ni huyo mbaya ama ni wewe uko na kashida tunafanya kazi mzuri sana ya registration kama hii nyumba ya UDA umoja ndio utatupeleka bere na mimi nawauliza pamoja ndugu zangu na wamama wazangu kwa sababu uwezo mkubwa ni wenu na usawizi mkubwa wa kura ni wenu nyinyi ndio mtatupandilishia wazee na vijana na watoto wote tuingie laini moja tunyoroshe tusonge bere The leaders called on the country to rally behind the deputy president saying he holds the answer to what is ailing the country. Kevin Washira Prime Edition. Well, that story brings us to our first break. This is KBC Prime Edition. Taking a short break, we'll be right back. amekwenda kuweka jiwe la msingi kabla ya kutoa hotuba na kuwazungumzia wananchi kwa kule kama mnavyoona amefuatiwa na board of directors yani wale wakurugenzi wanaohusika kina meta pamoja na bwana Mulio na waziri eh, bwana Jeremy Nyaga wa ukulima alikadhalika na mwana kwa huko nyuma pia bwana Chebo hiyo na wengine wengi ambao wako hapa kwa bwana waziri bwana Nyamwea na vile vile yuko pale bwana Jiji Kariuki makofi ndio hayo baada ya kuweka jiwe la msingi Kupata sikiliza tuni hii ya Romans chapter 8 verse 39. Bonyeza star 811 star 965 hash. No power in the sky above or in the earth below indeed nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Jesus Christ our Lord. Romans chapter 8 verse 39 Ili kupata sikiliza tuni hii ya Romans chapter 8 verse 39 Bonyeza star 811 star 965 hash Log on to the KBC website at www.kbc.co.ke to get the latest breaking news, entertainment, Dovuniku, sports, politics, lifestyle or business trends from Kenya and around the world. Never miss new episodes from your favorite TV shows, reruns and movies. Just stream online or watch live on your YouTube channel at KBC Channel 1 TV Shows for the day's biggest stories. Trust with the news and family entertainment. Log on to KBC Channel 1. Watch what you want anytime, anywhere. Welcome back. Now, Kenya Broadcasting Corporation staff in Mombasa are ahead of us. They held their end year party reflecting on the year that has mainly been dominated by the COVID-19 pandemic. Coast Region Controller of Programs and Kazungu said, through the journey, though the journey rather has been bumpy, it was worth celebrating. The event brought together affiliate stations Pwani FM, uh, radio and the station's counterparts from Kenya News Agency.
Yeah, tumona leo to relax kwa sababu ya hiyo 2 years it has been difficult for us lakini sasa hii tunashukuru kwa sababu tuko hai sote so we don't take it for granted Good for the heart. Now, destruction of evidence and untimely reporting of sexual offences has led to an increase in the trafficking of minors for sex at the coast region. A report conducted in 2019 by the International Justice Mission indicates over 20,000 minors fell victim with Mombasa, Kwale and Kilifi counties recording high incidents. Our reporter Juni Karisa with more. Mombasa, Kilifi and Kwale counties have been zoned as hotspots for sex trafficking at the coast with over 20,000 minors reported to have fallen victim to the vice. The International Justice Mission says perpetrators of this vice have made it nearly impossible for authorities to break the chain. If we only deal with the perpetrator and we forget the facilitator, then the facilitator will always organize another situation in which another child or that very same child is abused. And so we are trying to ensure that every person who is involved in this chain of abuse of a child is brought to book. IJM senior manager has faulted guardians for providing an enabling environment to the unlawful act. There is a supply environment for children to be abused sexually. And therefore when the tourists come, uh, both domestic and international, they find an a situation in which there's a lot of opportunity to engage in sexual activity with children, which then, um, you know, compounds the problem. Untimely reporting of cases and destruction of evidence has made it difficult to prosecute sexual offences. When you look at the numbers that are being reported, or the ones that have been identified through research, they're actually lower because there are so many other cases that are taking place. But since there's an there's an environment that is allowing uh, the, an environment of agreement between the perpetrator and the survivors and the victims, then it becomes very hard for these cases to be reported. The justice mission called for a change in perception and cultural norms that contribute to the abuse of the minor. Kwanza unapata ule mtoto atakuwa ni mtu wa kustuka kila dakika, ni mtoto wa alikuwa ni mtoto mcheshi anakaa peke yake. Kwa kwa hivyo ni vizuri haya masuala yanapotokea ni lazima hata usome kuishi nayo na ujitokeze upeleke kwa vyombo vya usalama na utafute washauri manake ni kitu inezaenda ikadhiri hata mtoto kiakili Juni Karisa Mbele from Mombasa County for the Prime Edition There's an item here on health the government and partners in the health sector have been challenged to put in place disability friendly health facilities and services for women living with disabilities seeking sexual reproductive health services. An NGO Christ and the Challenge to Challenge Women Organization Monday engaged community leaders drawn from different areas here in Nairobi in a sensitization campaign on sexual reproductive health rights of women and girls living with disabilities. To the organization, the Champions for Reproductive Health Rights of Women and Girls Living with Disabilities engaged community leaders to sensitize them on sexual reproductive health rights of this population of society. So when we go to the hospital, you see the faces and the facial expressions of the nurses and doctors wondering who gave you that pregnancy. We have feelings like any other person. <laughs> watasikia kana kwamba pia hao wanahusishwa katika uh, shughuli za kawaida za, za maendeleo uh, mtaani na katika surrounding hiyo kwa sababu wakati mwingi huwa ujumbe kama hauwafiki fika uko kwa line umefika daktari akikuangalia na kuambia wewe ungoje kwanza kwa nini ungoje kwa sababu ni disability ya juu bila tadili na wewe the organization's leadership say there is need for inclusion of disability friendly facilities in hospitals especially for deaf and visually impaired patients that cater for their needs so we want to ensure that the accessibility is good the nurses are trained on sign language so that persons with the deafness are able to come there and access services without bringing in third parties because when third parties come in you know privacy is compromised <laughs> Instead of kuhudumiwa, ule mtu amepata pale anamoigino. The leaders who convened at the Friends Community Center in Makadara have pledged to take the message of inclusivity to their local communities.
An item on gender-based violence, community-based organizations have been challenged to take up government funds and empower community groups to start small businesses, noting that this will help deal with increased cases of sexual as well as gender-based violence. Economic insecurity has been identified as a major cause for the rise in cases of gender-based violence in the country. Speaking at Mukuru Kwa Ruben Center, the Director, State Department for Gender, Protas Onyango, said within the 16 days of activism, sensitization and capacity building are key. At the same time, he said the Ministry of Gender has provided funds to empower women in entrepreneurship. Let us say no to negative cultural beliefs and practices. Here we have an office in Nairobi, uh, county apply for those funds and they'll improve your socioeconomic well-being the dutch embassy said the power of voices is vital reiterating they will continue working with the government through strategic partnership to end the vice put in place about gender-based violence uh, i think progress has been made also kenya and the kenya government has put some interesting efforts have signed some of the interventions is a member of the uh, the generation equality forum stakeholders have called for forensic management urging courts to have a time frame for sgbv cases we also have our child protective volunteers our chvs our gender defenders and our paralegals all of you are working towards one goal we have been going round and there are quite a number of facilities that have been launched and as i'm talking now we have 46 integrated GBV facilities within our public facilities and also adding on to the private. Resource mobilization needs to come at grassroots level. We need to be empowered with expertise to ensure we are able to resource for our own selves. We are able to implement those projects. Cases of sexual and gender-based violence have escalated during the COVID-19 pandemic era. On its part, the government has reiterated its commitment to end sexual and gender-based violence in the country. For Prime Edition, I'm Ruth Wamboy. From GBV to mental health, a group of women and men from Nakuru County have embarked on mental health sensitization campaigns aimed at encouraging people to seek counseling in effort to curb rising cases of suicide and related crimes. The group under the theme, it's okay not to be okay, says that the initiative has seen over 150 people going to mental therapy clinics to connect with therapists, debrief, and also to find a sense of community and purpose in their lives again. Statistics on mental health reach an all-time high. It's okay not to be okay. It's okay not to be okay. A group of men and women in Nakuru have taken it up upon themselves to reduce cases of mental health in the region through the It's Okay Not To Be Okay campaign. It's okay not to be okay. 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 The group comprising of over 150 members are at the center stage of ensuring persons in need of mental health services get wellness assistance from the boisterous mental health campaign founded by Nakuru moms and dads. <laughs> Wangu Awero, a 40-year-old small-scale trader, says the campaign has relieved her of the anxiety, especially with the economic strains brought about by the COVID-19 pandemic. Sisi, especially the parents, we are going through a lot. Not only that, tunanyamaza, na hatuongei. So we have a very good chance ya kuongea, na ku, kuwa, kuatilia your stress. Because ukitoka inje, unapata. Kuna mtu utongea na ee, ile nye unukona na unapitia, unapata mwingine napitia zaidi yako. Uono na hakuna kitu napitia. But ukikaa nao kwa nyumba, you will end up killing yourself. I wish people can come out and wonge, unapatana na watu, ata ukitoka inje, unapiga nduru kama mchizi. It's okay. We are saying it's okay to be, to be not okay. Unaongea inje, una, unapiga nduru, unapiga kati. Watu watoto wa watu kuita mtoto. Kwa mtoto, be a child for just once. Alafu ukirudi kwa nyumba, unapata ulidansu, ukatoka, ukenda ukila, ukalala. Ukiamuka utamuka, utamuka na mazo mpia. Scholar Stick and Dung with the group coordinator says COVID-19 pandemic has increased levels of psychological distress and anxiety, particularly among the small-scale traders, young people among others. 
Uh, we also have people here that are in, uh, their bosses are really toxic. We are hoping what we are doing today that everyone will release stress. And uh, I wish you can promise we can give them jobs because COVID-19 most, uh, mostly has uh, affected businesses and uh, jobs. So that means uh, financially people are not okay. Uh, but just this break that we've given them, it should be, it's a little bit of something that we can give that to the community. Councillors have, however, expressed concerns at the low uptake of counseling services among men. Men are shy, naturally, to talk about their own problems. Men tend to, you know, ignore, push things aside. But in real sense, actually, they suffer more because they are afraid of sharing, you know. So we are encouraging even men to talk about their problems, you know. A problem shared is a problem solved. So we are encouraging men not to suffer in silence. Hakuna uwanaume mtu kuumia kama menyamaza. 60% of Kenyans suffering from poor mental health, either knowingly or unknowingly, suffer from mental illness and are reluctant to seek treatment. It's okay to talk about, you know, what's troubling you. It's okay, you know, to share. And there's no shame in sharing. You know, most people tend to bundle up things and, uh, you know, up inside and after a while it explodes. You know, you can only bundle up for so long. Cases of suicide in the country have also risen at an alarming rate of 58% with data from the Ministry of Health indicating that more men are likely to die from suicide than women. For pre I'm glad it's small guy. Well, depression is a real and uh, insidious problem. So talk, share, um, open up. Let's take you to Kachaliba. Uh, in that constituency, the development fund there has moved in to refurbish dilapidated police quarters at Kacheliba police station. The fund also plans to build modern police quarters along common borders with Uganda to replace old dilapidated houses, mostly built during the colonial times. Kacheliba MP Mark Lamuno Cole said the move will enable people living in far-flung banditry and cattle wrestling prone corners to have better access to police services and security. The legislator, while handing over the structures, said the situation is worse for police officers in remote outposts as they operate from makeshift huts. Lamunokol said the National CDF board was also constructing Kanyaru's police station at the border of Kenya and Uganda to handle small cases of cattle theft and cross-border conflicts. Sigor MP Peter Lochakapong, who was also present, hailed the police for the good engagement on community policing with residents, saying it has helped in weeding out criminals within the region. Now, transport along the busy Embumwea Highway was paralyzed for hours Monday after angry parents of Isangi Primary School blocked the road to protest increased cases of road accidents in the area. The protest left most passengers stranded after the irate parents used logs to block the road, forcing police to intervene. Transport along the busy Embu Moya Highway was halted for the better part of Monday as residents barricaded roads protesting the rise of road accidents that have so far claimed the lives of three school going children. Shinda, what will I go up? Daily, as a boy, Uchana, what is in the Rani? To go up, she go was our. I do not see now, not only government. That we are going to Bab, to go was our. The accidents the locals blamed on speeding drivers who are careless about traffic rules. The aggrieved parents claim they have lost many lives for the last three years and nothing has been done. The 
Sasa tunauliza hii spindi yote ya gari kutoka kutoka tumalia ambapo tumalia ambapo miaka mzima miaka tatu kutoka kutoka kwa kwa kalima hiyo ndio tu babu inakosa kutoka PIA kwenda the fathers tunataka bums na si moja na mbili tunataka bums mingi kumekufa watu na gari zinapotea ndio maana tunasema tuwekewe bum eh hey, hofu sababu watoto wengi wanatoka pande hii wakipita pande hii shule sasa watoto wanakufia hapa watu wa boda pia wakipita ni shida zebra crossing tuwekewe they claimed some section of the highway have speed bumps but have been neglected for prime edition i'm gladys mungai now, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs has given the United Nations Environmental Program, UNEP, the assurance that Kenya is committed to the global cause of tackling climate change and pollution. Speaking during commemoration of UNEP's Golden Jubilee Foreign Affairs, Principal Secretary Ambassador Masharia Kamau said that Kenya, like many other countries, has been affected by the harsh realities of climate change. Kamau says human activities pose the biggest threat to the environment and that Kenya will work closely with global partners to ease the pressure on the ecosystem. The biggest singular most existential challenge that we are now facing is one of climate change and environmental dissemination, decimation uh, the destruction and this of our biodiversity and the uh, undermining of the Earth's ecosystems and the Earth's capability to really sustain human and actually life as we know it. This is really the biggest global challenge that we're facing out there. Uh, we were banding around ideas earlier today and we thought that Kenya should propose something. Uh, and uh, so we came up with securing the planet and its environment. Now, the resin production plant that is in Lanbib, Wajir County, will begin operations on the 22nd of December. That's this year. The plant, which will give some 3,000 Kenyan jobs, will position the country as the second largest producer of resin in the continent of Africa. After numerous false starts, it is all systems go for Kenya as it joins the League of World Resin Producers. Located in Wajir County, the resin production plant will use locally sourced gum and put thousands of Kenyans to work. We are looking forward to employ quite a number of youth, about 3,000 youth in the entire Wasumiro Basin. This one, will, of course, will give them, you know, the opportunity to provide jobs in terms of uh, collections and also in terms of skill productions. Ewasongiro North Development Authority Board Chairman Mohamed Liban says the factory will source gum from Andera, Isiolo, Samburu, Marsabit, Garissa and Wajir. <laughs> The project aims to eradicate poverty and improve the living standards of residents living in northern Kenya as well and the country's so much needed revenue. Jacqueline Masharia for Prime Edition. Well, Jacqueline, Jacqueline Masharia's report brings us to our second break. Richard Munga is on standby with the day's sports. We're going to take a short break. And when we come back, we will have Karon Jenga bringing us the day's news first before we move into the day's sports. Stay with us. story to share with KBC? Get in touch swiftly on email newsroom at kbc.co.ke Call 0723-892-654 or 0734-780-124 This Tuesday on Good Morning Kenya. Um, if you look at regulated sanitation coverage, yeah. 
And I say regulated because when you go to the rural areas, there's a lot of what is unregulated. People have sanitation if you go to your village. Can you sit back and say that, yes, we are going for the next election and you can give yourself a pat on the back and say you have delivered? We have done well. The next question a Kenyan out there yeah. in Pokot will ask, mm -hmm. I don't have access to clean water. How, how can you be clapping? Well, it's good to have you back. We now take a look at today's business news. My name is Carol Jenga. Now, the government plans to eliminate Kenya's reliance on solid biomass fuels by the year 2028. The Director of Renewable Energy, Dan Malango, says the government has developed policies to deal with biomass fuels, especially in rural areas where over 80% of households depend on firewood and charcoal as their primary sources of cooking fuel. According to the research by Clean Cooking, stakeholders, approximately 70% of households in Kenya still use a type of wood stove as either their primary or secondary cook stove with a great prevalence of 92% in rural areas. In Kenya, up to 34% of wood fuel harvested is unsustainable, contributing to environmental degradation and climate change. This corresponds to 64.7%, equivalent to 8.1 million households in Kenya using wood as their primary cooking fuel. It is estimated that complications from households' air pollution through inefficient stoves and fuels in claims 21,560 lives annually in Kenya, according to a recent study by the Kenya Cooking Sector. The most affected are the women and children below the age of five who spend most of their time with their mothers. Stakeholders at the second Clean Cooking Expo called for collaborative efforts to accelerate the implementation of clean cooking techniques that are accessible and affordable. The government can decide today Every home must have a stove, non-negotiable. Look at the time and the money this government has spent on HIV AIDS. Why can't we do the same about cooking if it is so important to this government? Even though Kenya is targeting the use of modern clean cooking solutions for all by 2028, the number of households still using biomass fuel as their primary cooking fuel is high. The Director of Renewable Energy, Dan Malango, has said to achieve this, the government will collaborate with clean cooking sector stakeholders and support the development of appropriate policy frameworks. We have come up with a, 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 a strategy, we are calling it the bioenergy strategy, the, which articulates what the actions we need to do and it encourages a partnership across all stakeholders. He noted the reintroduction of 16% VAT on cooking gas and high cost of electricity is watering down efforts to make clean cooking accessible and affordable. High cost of uh, these technologies will definitely affect the, the rate of adoption uh, and uh, the effect will not be positive, it will be negative and we need to really get government to, to realize this. The Institution of Engineering, Technologists and Technicians, Kenya, is keen on having in place a clear career path policy for students pursuing engineering courses. To achieve the institution, plans to work closely with the government in drafting of policies about the profession as well as with TVET on curriculum that meets the country's professional demands. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 
According to the State Department for Vocational, Technical and Training, enrollment to technical and vocational education and training institutions has increased nearly four times over the last eight years to 249,316, a sign that the sector is experiencing a surge of potential professionals in need for space in the technical and technological sectors of the economy. Some players are, however, of the opinion that there is a mismatch of skills employers require and what graduates from technical institutions have. During the launch of the Institution of Engineering Technologists and Technicians, Kenya's five-year strategic plan, it emerged that there is need to have in place policy guidelines that define a clear ascension of engineering technologists and technicians as professional bodies work to accredit and vet candidates. Experts say the engineering sector did well to prop up the economy when the country began reeling from the adverse effects of COVID-19 pandemic and therefore warrant a closer look at empowering the sector. Currently, the Institution of Engineering Technologists and Technicians Kenya is composed of members drawn from the broad engineering technology disciplines, including civil and building, mechanical, electrical and electronic at levels of artisan, craft, diploma, higher diploma and degree. The central bank is considering having its information about the banking industry hosted at Kansas City's National Data Center. This emerged during a visit to the National Data Center by a delegation from the CBK led by the CBK Deputy Governor Sheila Mbijiwe. Here are the the Konsa Technopolis City's National Data Center currently hosts data for 10 key institutions in the country drawn from both public and private sectors. The Central Bank of Kenya could be the next addition as the banking industry regulator considers moving its servers to the National Data Center. Central Bank Deputy Governor Shilambijiwe led a delegation from the Central Bank on a tour of the facility. The visit was informed by the Central's bank desire to strengthen its banking system and data protection function. Central Bank of Kenya has its own data that it must protect and we have data centers. And we also have a banking system which needs to protect its data. So to compare d um, data centers um, throughout the country and across into different countries is very important for a central bank. The central bank deputy governor said the facility's capacity is comparable to data centers in developed countries, thus placing Kenya on the path towards transformation into a knowledge-based economy. The National Data Center here at Consa Technopolis is very critical for the country. It's our digital platform as Consa Technopolis as a smart city. Secondly, we will host the applications, um, all kind of data from here at the Technopolis and also from port government and private sector. We are also going to be part of global um, platforms of data centers because we have certified to the global standard. The central bank joins a growing list of public and private sector institutions pursuing investment opportunity at Konza Technopolis. Well, and that's all we had lined up for you. Up next is the Forex Market Report. And also our shares have been trading at the Nairobi Securities Exchange. My name is Carol Jenga. Have a good night.
Well, a very good evening to you. Always an, a pleasure uh, joining us, you and us for KBC Sports. I'm Richard Munga with the latest in the world of sports. And in our top story tonight, nine-year-old Kiana Rajput emerged the champion in the Wee category during the 10th and final round of the KCB National Autocross Championship, which culminated at Jamuhuri Park uh, racetrack on Sunday. Her championship win goes down in history. Uh, she is the first female driver to ever lay her hands on a Wee autocross championship in Kenya. Speaking on the recognition, Kiana said that she had been dedicated and practiced hard to improve in her skill. The season which started in January at the waterfront current has seen drivers from different age groups compete for championship title opportunities with cars, quads and badges. In the final round, 29 drivers completed survey at the mud splattering experience prior to the truck drying up in the afternoon heat round. And we stopped autocross for a while and that just made me like forget all the things about it because I haven't like we practiced a bit but like it was too much like waiting and stuff. 15 year old Brandon Nganga emerged the champion in the two wheel drive Nan Tabon Junior Baji category after he beat Neil Gohin in the home stretch. Daniel Mwendwa, Sports. <laughs> In other news, Martin Umbura emerged the overall winner of the 2021 Le Leicester Golf Tournament that was played at the Pass 71 Nyali Golf and Country Club in Mombasa County. The handicap 17 golfer, who is also a member of the club, carded a 39 stable four points to win the title after posting a 17 and 22 points in both nines. The day-long 18-hole Stable Ford Charity Tourney in aid of war veterans in country attracted 140 golfers from the home club, Sea Link, Mombasa Golf Club, Leisure, Vipingo, Malindi and invited guests. It has a history of you know, supporting uh, charitable causes and uh, as usual today we were very happy to step up to the occasion and uh, host this tournament. We hope to raise... Uh, quite some money in the evening later on for charitable causes. Handicap 15, George Choge was the men's winner with a count back score of 38 points after tying in the same points with men's runners-up Handicap 6, Kevin Smith. Handicap 13, Trufeno Yaro won the ladies category with 37 points while Handicap 39, Divina Ongali was the runners-up on 36 points. Moima Riga, a student, was awarded the best junior prize on 39 points while the best senior on 38 points was Handicap 25, Paul Masharia with Handicap 31 Caroline Muni winning the guest prize after carding 35 points. The course is in very good condition. The field is huge for a charity tournament. The weather is a bit mild. It's it's, le it's less hotter than uh, than uh, normal, and uh, it rained in the morning, so I think the course will be will be playing perfectly. The final round of the 2021 Kenya Golf Union Series event will be held at the club from the 11th to 12th December, the Nyali Open Championship, where the golfer of the year will be crowned. Elsewhere, Athletics Kenya on Monday held their fourth round of consultative forum with athletic stakeholders in the Mount Elgon region to identify and resolve issues affecting the sector. The session was held at Mount Elgon High Altitude Training Centre in Kaptamawad, where different athletes spoke in unison about the need for proper training facilities in the region. Tokyo Games Olympian Asbel Kipsang decried the low progress of works on the high altitude centre as athletes are forced to make painful adjustments. Africa under 18, 800 meter silver medalist Sheila Chip Gay said many junior athletes in the region can now follow in the footsteps of legends like Ben Jipcho, Juman Diwa, Shem Kororia, and Milka Chamos, among others, but lack the requisite support from the relevant authorities. Wakati tunasema athletes wanatakikana wakuja kwa mkutano waona athletes Kenya officials, headquarters, wale ma athletes tunapata ni wale wakubwa wale wako na majina are not actually the people we want we are looking for the athletes who are growing naomba tena next time professor iwe support nataka ni kwa mpaka ni ingie team ya olympic kwa sababu mimi nikadomaliza shule niko mzee mwezi wa 3 na ningeomba kwa nimaliza shule ni ngera na course cha polisi ama jeshi 
Between all, Kenya, Cyprian Kotut and Ethiopia, Sehei Alemu Maru took the honors. Uh, the 77, 37th uh, rather, uh, edition uh, of the ASIX Firenze Marathon World Athletics uh, Label Road Race. Kotut crossed the finish line in 2 hours, 8.59 minutes, recording the second fastest time in the history of the Florence Marathon. The 29-year-old Miss James Kuto's course record by 17 seconds. Samuel Lemoy from Kenya finished second, improving his personal best from 2 hours 12.14 minutes to 2 hours 9.54 minutes. Olivier Ra Ibraburuta from Burundi completed the podium, taking that place in 2 hours 10.13 minutes ahead of former Eritrean record holder uh, Kibrom Rosam. In the women's race, Maru set the fourth fastest time in the history of the women's event in Florence with 2 hours 27.17 minutes, beating our compatriot Margetu Ifa Giletu by 4 seconds. Internationally, Ralph Rangnick has been appointed Manchester United interim manager until the end of the season. The 63-year-old contract will see him take charge of the first team until June and then remain at the club for at least a further two years in a consultancy role. United reached an agreement with Lokomotiv Moscow last week for the release of Rangnick, who was manager of sports and development at the Russian club. He will take the reins from Michael Carrick, who was in temporary charge of the team for last week's 2-0 Champions League win of of Villarreal, as well as Sunday's 1-1 draw at Chelsea in the Premier League following the dismissal of Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. However, Carrick will remain in charge for Thursday's home game against Arsenal if Ragnick's work permit is not processed in time. Oh, that's it for sports tonight, but visit uh, kbc.co.ke, the sports category, for more of the updates that you've had tonight, as well as other sports making headlines. I'm Richard Munga. Do have a lovely night. Thank you very much uh, indeed, Richard Munga. Um, I'm reminded tomorrow we, the Good Morning Kenya team will be hosting the CS Sicily Karaoke on Good Morning Kenya and they'll be discussing the milestones in the water irrigation and sanitation area. So make sure you join them tomorrow in the morning. Well, that's all we had for you tonight. Thank you very much indeed for watching KBC Prime Edition. My name is Tom Boyer. Good night from Nairobi, Kenya.